Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. Today we're talking about the film Heal the Living. We're still uh, digitally live, at least at the Toronto International Film Festival. This is a moment, uh, a moment. This is a film. This is a film about the moment. This is a film about the uh, direct quote uh, from 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 one of the actors in the film and the the director uh, about the migration of a heart. It's uh, it really is uh, a love song. It's it's a it's a beautiful film. It's it's something that you're going to want. Uh, to get out and see and as you'll hear me say and it sounds a little corny uh, on some level but I came out of the theater after viewing this uh, at the festival you know wanting to be a better person as crazy as that sounds wanting to walk up to somebody and smile and to shake their hand and to and to tell my wife that I love her this is a a great film it's about science it's about mystery it's it's about uh, listening and and just taking care of others and taking care of the moment it's also a gorgeous film to look at it's called heal the living uh don't forget rabble.ca davidpecklive.com for more interviews if you'd like to uh, hire me to speak at your next event or you can also get a copy of my book real changes incremental there on the site and uh, stay tuned for heal the living at the toronto international film festival So welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by a group, a very big group of special (laughs) guests here this morning. How about we just have everybody uh, uh, tell us who you are. We're here to talk about a film, uh, Heal the Living. Uh, And first of all, I'm going to say before anything else, congratulations on a beautiful, uh, gorgeous film. I really, really enjoyed it uh, on a whole lot of levels, and I hope we can talk a little bit about that. So maybe, would you mind introducing yourself, just telling us a little bit about who you are? Yes, my name is Katel Kilevere, and I'm the director of the movie, and I'm sorry for my English, so I may speak French, you know. And I'm sorry for in, my in French. In order so. to be smarter. <laughs> 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 and I'm uh, Anne Dorval, I'm the, uh, one of the actresses of the, of the film. Excellent. Well, thank you, thank you for taking the time today to, to, to speak to me. There's, um, and to our guests on Face to Face. So part of the reason for calling my podcast Face to Face uh, is because I think everything we do is connected to others in one way or another. And so for me, uh, your film, uh, the the colors, the cinematography, I I, I saw your film as being deeply relational. Um, I'm sure that was intentional. Can you talk about that? relational component in in a way and Mm -hmm. how you um, were able to get such brilliant performances and as you wrote the film um, was that intentional Peut-être déjà juste pour resituer le film, pour ceux qui, qui, qui nous écoutent, c'est vraiment l'histoire du, du voyage, de la migration d'un organe, un cœur du corps d'un adolescent vers le corps d'une, d'une femme qui, qui attend une grève pour prolonger sa vie so just to uh, clarify and give a sense of the movie for uh, those who the, doesn't know them yet, this is a story of a migration of a heart that goes from a teenager that lost his life to a woman in her 50s that is awaiting a transplant in order to prolong her life. Et le film est construit comme une chanson de geste qui accompagne en fait ce voyage d'un personnage vers un autre. Donc C'est un film qui est profondément basé sur le lien, la question de la relation, puisque ça raconte comment cette aventure-là euh, n'est possible que grâce au rôle que va jouer chaque individu dans cette chaîne. So this is a film that is uh, constructed as a gestural song, as is a song of gestures, la chanson de gestes is expression in French, and is a film that is connecting actually uh, people through this migration of the heart, it goes through different characters, so it's deeply connected in, in the core, the movie itself is um, following the travel of this heart, the migration of this heart through different characters in the movie. So, so, so it's so it's a song, 
It's a song. It's a. Uh, is it a. Is it a love song? Sure. Oui, bien sûr. Oui. C'est une chanson d'amour du début à la fin. Surtout que ce garçon, quand on le découvre dans le film, il est amoureux d'une jeune fille. Et donc cette femme, elle hérite du cœur, d'un cœur battant, d'un cœur amoureux. Et elle va se poser aussi la question, elle, de sa vie sentimentale, de, de, la, de son avenir sentimental, puisqu'il y a une, une, des retrouvailles avec une personne qu'elle aime. Donc l'amour est, est, est le fil conducteur aussi, de, 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 à plein de niveaux, plein d'échelles, de, de différentes manières. Yes, yes, it is a love song because actually, indeed, the heart that this uh, lady will receive is a heart of a teenage boy that was in love. So she's receiving this heart that is in love, and it will make her question as well uh, love in her life because she's also uh, getting involved with someone with a man in her life, and so um, it's a, a heart that comes with love and it's received by someone that it also will experience love and will make her question there's a, there's a great the moment presence. there's a great moment where i think she says i don't know that i want a dead person's heart mm -hmm. Mais, mais il s'agit quand même, c'est très très beau de, de parler de ce cœur amoureux qu'elle va le recevoir, qu'elle qu va, qu va peut-être recevoir, et de ce, pour ce personnage-là, de se demander aussi si elle mérite un tel cœur, si, si ça vaut la peine de, de, de souffrir tout ça pour peut-être avoir, peut-être que son corps va rejeter ce cœur qui n'est pas, pas fait pour elle. Il y a toute cette culpabilité aussi derrière. Est-ce qu'on est qu mérite un tel cadeau? De, de, de la part de nous de notre humain uh. so um, yes but I think it's also uh, beautiful to talk about this heart that is actually an enamored heart that she might receive and as she's an aging woman there's also the question uh, do I really deserve to receive this heart am I really worse something is the experience itself worse something the suffering I'm going to go through is it worse something So um, there's also, of course, the, uh, the subject of guilt. I am also worse to receive such a gift from another human being. So, so in a sense, I wonder, is, is there a sense uh, then of obligation as a result of getting this heart saying, I, I now have an obligation to others to live well. It's not about whether or not I smoke or whether or not mm -hmm. I drink, but it's about how I, how I interact and how I treat others. Il y a, a peut-être de ça, de, de, du fait que, que c'est une mère aussi, que si elle n'accepte pas ce cœur, elle va mourir assurément et elle va abandonner ses, ses deux fils. Mais il y a aussi cette question de savoir est-ce que je vais être un poids pour eux? Est-ce que, est que ça va devenir plus lourd de continuer à vivre avec un cœur qui ne supportera peut-être pas mon corps, ma condition? Parce qu'il y a beaucoup de rejets aussi. Euh, un cœur, ça a une durée de vie de, de 10 à 15 ans. Donc, ça va être à refaire de toute façon. Et ça, c'est s'il n'y a pas de rejet dans la première année. Donc, il y a tout ce questionnement-là. C'est beaucoup de souffrance. Et on ne connaît pas l'issue de, 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 de l'opération. On ne sait pas comment ça va se passer. Il y a toute cette inquiétude-là. Donc, bien sûr qu'il faut vivre pour, pour ses enfants, pour ceux qu'on a mis au monde. Mais... Euh, mais est-ce que notre corps va le supporter? C'est tout ça. Est-ce est que les dieux vont être de notre côté aussi? We're going to need a translation on that. <laughs> yeah, yes, maybe. I mean, the, the basic question is, yeah, yeah, of course, we must live for the people we put on down to this earth, and we must live for our loved ones, but will the gods be on our sides too? So she's actually asking all these questions to herself because she's also a mother. So. If she does not accept to receive this heart, of course she will die, and then therefore she would abandon her two sons. So there's all this questioning: is that if, if will this heart um, carry uh, support my condition and my weight and all that and carry me further? There's also the question of reject. There's lots right. of questioning. The medical and the emotional. Mm, the medical and emotional reject, but there's um, you know she's afraid also that the heart will not stand her condition once again, and that you know when you receive a heart, it's not forever. It can extend your life, maybe 10 years, maybe 15. Then you will have to be redone. So, is it worth it? So she's obviously going through lots of questioning and emotional questioning. She's going through extreme suffering and the issue when you receive a transplant is absolutely unknown you never know whether the heart will match or there will be a reject so 
yes, we must leave for someone, but under what condition? And she's also wondering if she's going to be a weight for them, living with the heart, if the heart is not functioning to the best. Right? For me, the uh, and congratulations again on such a beautiful film. It's, uh, it's absolutely gorgeous and pulled me in right from the get-go. And a friend of mine, um, about 10 years ago, he was he abused his body quite a bit, and so he went through a transplant. And so there was a, there were oh, yeah, a okay. variety of connection, connections for me. And, and then as a, a father, a fairly young father with an 11 and a, a 9-year-old, it was heartbreaking at moments to, to see it. Um, for me, uh, so many wonderful moments. But one of, the, one, of the, uh, one of the most touching for me was when the nurse took that moment, I'm getting uh, goosebumps, when she took her, her uh, uh, iPhone, iPhone out and she texted Bruno and she said, I love you. Mm. It was just like, for me, that is the film, in a sense. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's about being present and, and remembering mm. to, to pay attention mm. and to tell others that we love them often. Mm. I know I don't do it enough. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oui. Je, ça me fait très plaisir que vous parliez de ce moment et que vous l'ayez ressenti comme ça parce qu'en plus c'est vraiment le point d'orgue entre les deux parties du film c'est le moment charnière qui va relier euh, cette première famille à cette deuxième et c'est vraiment en effet à un moment où le, le sens du film doit, doit prendre euh, parce que c'est comment en fait la vie des autres résonne en nous et a une incidence sur la nôtre et, euh, et et comment en fait le, le fait de vivre ensemble euh, nous guide en permanence. Euh, le courage des uns ou la violence de ce que vivent les autres, euh, il faut être ouvert à ça pour, pour euh, accepter aussi d'être influencé par ça et de faire des choix, des choix de vie. Yeah, it actually gives me a lot of pleasure that you touch on that scene on that point because it's a very central point in the movie because that is the moment where one family will connect to the other family. And um, I think that connection of one family to the other also embody the importance of all of us living together, of how other people's lives will resonate in um, our lives or how other people uh, may be courage to do something or the violence that other people might experience may also influence us and that's the important Of and the weight of all of us living together. Um, ah oui, accepter d'être, euh, comment dire, accepter d'être touché ou d'être d'être ouvert en fait, de, de réceptif à, 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 la, à la vie des autres et ce qui nous permet aussi en permanence de, 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 de nous renvoyer à ce qui est vraiment important dans la nôtre de vie. To accept, to open up, and to be open to other people's lives and experiences, if that would also bring us back to what's important to us in our lives as well. Well, there, it seems to me, uh, relationally, there's so much at stake, uh, you know, in the film, but just in life. <laughs> you know, the people we meet, and, and we tend to be, um, I don't know, uh, so inward, you know, and afraid. We're, we're, we're always afraid, it seems to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so for Because me, we protect we pr we're always protecting ourselves. Sure. And what a beautiful way to tell the story within the context of someone getting. I don't think of. I can't think of anything quite as terrifying as getting a heart mm -hmm. transplant. Mm -hmm. Did Did you ever, as you were acting this out, did you ever feel, um, hmm, um, I don't know, f physically vulnerable? Did you ever sort of go through that? You know, you were prepping for the operation. I, mean, <laughs> I know it's a film, and I know you're acting, but how? how it's a great question. Yeah. Ben, c'est sûr que je, je comme actrice, j'utilise je, je, tout ce qu'il y a autour de moi, de ma vie personnelle, de la vie des autres. Je passe ma vie à observer aussi. Ça, c'est une seconde nature. Ça fait partie de de, de mon travail d'actrice de faire ça. Mais euh, je pense qu'on a un instinct de survie qui, euh, qui est égal à notre... En tout cas, dans mon cas, qui est égal à, à mon instinct de, de mort, à, à cette de, crainte de, de, de mourir à tout moment. Et plus on vieillit, je crois que plus, plus c'est quelque chose qui est présent dans, dans nos vies, parce qu'on sent la mort approcher. Alors, c'est pas... Euh, c'est pas nécessairement une situation dans laquelle on a envie de, de plonger comme acteur, mais euh, parce que c'est sûr que c'est un, une situation difficile, c'est une situation compliquée qu on, qu on, 
à laquelle on essaie d'éviter de penser dans notre propre vie parce que ce serait trop difficile. Mais en même temps, c'est un film qui est tellement lumineux. C'est un film qui est, qui est tellement chargé d'espoir, justement parce que c'est un film sur la solidarité des êtres humains. C'est un film qui, 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 qui parle de... de, de, de Taking care of each other, you know, de prendre soin de quelqu'un. Il n'y a rien de plus gratifiant que de prendre soin les uns des autres. Et c'est ça, je, je trouvais, qui, qui, qui rendait la chose un peu plus facile, disons, aisée. Quand je pensais à la fin de ce film-là, je, je me disais, ça, ça, vaut, ça vaut la peine d'y plonger. Oui, voilà. Je ne sais pas si c'est clair. Hein. J'ai dit beaucoup de choses et c'est très long. <rire> Uh, that's, for, that's for sure. As, a, as an actress, you know, it, it's become actually a second nature for me. I spend my whole life observing, observing others, observing uh, different things. Because as an actress, you borrow from your own life, but you borrow from other people's experiences and lives as well. So as for me, um, I do realize we all have a survival instinct, but I do feel that mine is as strong as my fear of dying and, and the more we age the more we mm. we relate to that because mm. we feel death coming closer so of course that kind of movie and that kind of situation is not something you really want to dive into as an actor uh, these are complex and difficult situations you pretty much avoid thinking about them and you avoid thinking about the choices you would have if this were to happen in your mm. own life because it's extremely difficult but as for me the movie was uh, especially about hope and that was was very dear to me and it talks about the human solidarity for and i think taking care and taking care in a free manner mm -hmm. of someone else taking care of one another in life is the most important and just when i think about that part of the movie that was making it a little easier for me and that would decide me to of course dive into the situation and give myself into the movie so at the risk of, of overstating and this doesn't happen too often, but when I when I finish the film, overstating um, is uh, um, repeating. Yeah, I, I don't want to overstate, but I this is the kind of film that, that made me want to want to be a better person, honestly. Uh, to I mean, one of the, one of the first things I wanted to do was to call my wife Elizabeth and and just oh, say yeah. you you I love you and you need to you oh. need to see this film you need to see this story. Uh, by the way, everyone needs to see this story. I mean, healing the living is is also. I think a real understatement as well. Sure. Um, so I'm a philosopher academically, so I'm very interested how you portrayed modern science. And for me, the scene where the doctor is washing the body, that's not, my, that's not been my experience. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a shoulder operation recently. They were wonderful to me. Um, there's something very um, medicinal about you know, the, the, the medical world. There's a lot of stainless steel. You have a lot of blue in your film. Yep. So much warmth. Mm -hmm. um, that's not the hospital I go to. <laughs> so why did you why did you blend it so nicely? Is that is that a hope so kind of comment you're making about modern science and the real world kind of becoming more holistic and sure. relational and friendly sure. Sure. and loving? Sure. <laughs> en fait, je pense que quand on fait un film, on se doit à la fois de de retranscrire, enfin de connaître ce dont on parle, de retranscrire le, le réel et en même temps de penser à, à ce vers quoi la réalité devrait tendre en fait, ce que devrait être euh, le monde. Parce qu'on va proposer une représentation aux gens et cette représentation va les influencer peut-être, va les guider. C'est dans ce sens-là qu'on fait aussi des films en espoir de changer les choses. Yeah, um, when uh, you do a film, you have to be very, you have to dive into be very close to reality. You have to be able to portray reality the way it is, but you also have uh, the possibility of presenting reality in a way that it should go into. Because mm. when you're presenting mm -hmm. this movie to people, you have the possibility of maybe not, if not change, but maybe influence the way people see things and people will express things as well. And so that's what I was looking to do in the film. Par exemple, la question dans, 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 autour du ton d'organe, euh, c'est beaucoup la question de, du rituel. C'est-à-dire que en fait, les gens doivent accepter qu'une qu personne est, est morte alors que son corps est encore vivant. Et on va les priver quelque part euh, euh, du moment où le corps s'arrête de vivre. C'est quelque chose qui, voilà, qui, 
qui leur est, dont on les prive euh, parce que ça a eu lieu pendant une opération médicale de, de, de prélèvement d'organes et moi je pense que pour que les gens a, a, acceptent de donner leurs organes il faut qu'ils qu continuent à avoir du rituel on ne peut pas dire adieu à quelqu'un sans, sans qu'il y ait du, un rite autour ça ne peut pas être uniquement euh, euh, médical cette, cette affaire de, de don et quelque part c'est ce que le film raconte c'est à dire que cet infirmier euh, coordinateur qui est joué par Tahrim il joue ce rôle en fait de, de, de celui qui va respecter le corps prononcer les dernières paroles préserver le rite et ce que j'espère quelque part parce que je pense qu'il y a des personnes qui le font mais elles sont peut-être rares dans le milieu médical mais si ça peut aider en fait à, à faire aussi euh, réfléchir le milieu médical euh, sur ces questions là et sur l'importance du respect au, des morts et du corps et du sacré quelque part et bien tant mieux ça sert à ça. le film sert à ça aussi Yeah, the, the issue with the donation and donation of organs is that we need to understand that we need to still conserve the ritual of death and to accept and understand when a body, when does death arrives to a body, because when you do a donation, uh, there is a body that is still alive, so it's very difficult for the family and the people that stay to um, finish that, to close that, because uh, when, when does death comes, and mm. when is, mm. yeah, when is the body? Yeah. And so what is important, important that I wanted to portray is important to still respect this ritual of death because we can't just separate it and make it so clinical that it's just taking organs. And so the nurse that is played by Tahar um, Rahim in this movie, he is the one that is going to respect this ritual, that is going to say the last words, that is going uh, to conserve uh, and respect the body as well and conserve the body. Because what I wanted is also maybe make the medical staff in the medical field to start to reflect in these questions, to start to reflect that it, it is great to have the science to have the donation of transplants, but it's important for us also to conserve the ritual of death, to respect death, to respect the body, and to respect the sacred as and well. And isn't, isn't he the one that, uh, or maybe it's the doctor with the bird, the bird is my drug? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, talk about just a real sort of shift. Not that not that doctors aren't human beings, of course they are, sure. but they really do seem to approach their work as if sometimes we're nothing much more than an automobile. <laughs> We're in, we're in to get an oil change, right? And I think for me, that's a brilliant uh, a blend of the, um, hmm, the dualistic, I guess, nature of, 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 of science, of science sure. right? Yes. That, that stainless steel and the skin, when the skin and the stainless steel meet, I understand, but what is it doing to me, right? What is it doing to my heart? What is it doing, right? From the soul inside out. Sure. Um, probably have to wrap it up here in a minute. And uh, I, I wanna ask, I mean, The film's a wake-up call, it seems to me, and there's a there's a there's a there's a line in the film where the mom. I mean, I, I'm surprised more people in the theater were sobbing when the mother it said, was, sobbing delicious. like sobbing. just, and and the mother. I think it was the mother. It might have been the father, but I'm pretty sure it was the mother. And she said, um, yeah, it was the mother. Um, some people wake up, don't they? After their sons, they realize their son mm -hmm. is 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 brain dead essentially. Mm -hmm. It's about expectation, but it's also about uh, about living in the moment. Qu'est-ce que je je pense que c'est un commentaire. Euh, c'est un commentaire. Oui, okay. mais euh, un peu de ce que tu pensais à propos de ça. À propos de quoi exactement de, de vivre le moment parce que la mère il y a un moment où elle dit il y a des gens qui se réveillent n'est-ce pas mm -hmm. quand son fils est là et alors il disait que c'est important aussi de d'être dans au moment présent. De, oui, on a l'espoir, on a peut-être l'idée que mm. ça pourrait être différent, mais mm. aussi d'accepter et être au moment présent et, et d'être avec ceux qui arrivent en ces moments. Qu'est-ce mm. qu'il disait aussi avant Il disait qu'il avait l'impression que votre film, c'était aussi un petit, un petit message pour que la, les, pour les gens, gens au niveau des réveille. médecins mm. qui souffrent de l'épuisement, de la compassion, donc ils mm. considèrent souvent les corps comme mm. des machines, c'était un petit tapette pour mm. les réveiller et leur dire revoyez un petit peu au niveau des rituels absolument c'est complètement, complètement le but de ce film aussi en fait il y a la, même si aujourd'hui la, la mort euh, juridique c'est l'extinction du cerveau et puis celle du cœur. le film raconte que de toute façon l'arrêt du cœur aura toujours une place symbolique 
pour les gens qui, 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 qui perdent, qui sont dans le deuil. Et qu'il ne il faut pas euh, non plus ne plus tenir compte de ça. Et, euh, et il faut que ce moment-là soit accompagné, l'arrêt du cœur. Et c'est aux médecins, c'est aux infirmiers de, de le prendre en charge. On ne peut pas être dans une société sans, sans rite, sans, 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 sans faire de place aussi à, à, au, au sacré. Sinon les, sinon, les gens ne donneront pas leurs organes et les, et les, les deuils seront des deuils traumatiques. So again, it's really important to understand death, and uh, right now, death for the judiciary, death as well. If your brain, if your brain dead, or you know, and so then you start talking about the donation of organs. But it's very important to understand death with when the heart stops, and for the medical staff and for the nurses to also understand and respect the ritual. Because when you, if you're a donor for the family, it's uh, it's really shocking and it's really moving to make that decision and so there needs to be that side of the medical staff the understanding the respect of the ritual to make it easier on the families to make it easier on the whole transplant and the donation uh, it's important to keep it balanced and not just make it a transaction not just make it right. a biological good. or clinical yeah, thing good. but you just take not this just a put it here yeah, and, and put it to another person so a respect of the sacred Respect for the sacred. Nice. Um, I hate the fact that I have to end this interview now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but, uh, nice you know, yes. it's so great. Oh, well, thank yeah. you. Thank it's you so much. the best interview I had. Oh, wow. Well, well, thank you. That's, uh, that's uh, uh, you. very complimentary and lovely. Uh, a, a wonderful, beautiful film. Congratulations again, and I hope everyone sees it. <laughs> thank C you so Capital much. E. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.